Thanks. So today's question on discovering your cosmic self.com is how did life first begin? How does the physicalist physics explanation explain life? Can life be explained by the science of consciousness? So, uh, of course, this is a full chapter. It's chapter 10 in You Are the Universe, Discovering Your Cosmic Self. And I thought maybe I'd even read a little bit of the chapter for you, uh, or maybe not, but let me see what I can read for you. How did life first begin? So, one of the clever ways that... Um, a physicist by the name of uh, Andre Linde has given an explanation for life and the beginning of life. And he's the physicist who's also uh, responsible for the explanation of the multiverse theory <coughs> of eternal or chaotic inflation. Uh, he says when, when he was asked about the most important recent discovery in physics, Linde said, quantum energy. This is the finding that empty space contains <coughs> a very tiny amount of energy. We've touched upon this fact, but Linde works it into the reason for life on Earth. At first glance, the amount of vacuum energy looks quite uh, trivial. Each cubic centimeter of empty interstellar space contains about 10 to the power of minus 29 grams of invisible matter, or equivalently, vacuum energy. Linde points out uh, in his discussion, invisible matter and vacuum energy are fairly compatible. This is almost nothing, 29 orders of magnitude smaller than the mass of matter in a cubic centimeter of water, five orders of magnitude smaller than the proton. If the whole Earth were, would be made of such matter, it would weigh less than a gram. The importance of vacuum energy, tiny as it is, was vast. The balance between the energy in empty space and the invisible matter in empty space gave us the universe we inhabit. Too much of one or the other, and the universe would either have collapsed upon itself after the Big Bang, or would have flown apart into random atoms that never gathered into stars and galaxies. Here is where Linde finds the key to life on Earth. Vacuum energy isn't constant, he believes. As the universe expands, the density of matter will thin out as galaxies fly further and further apart. As this happens, the density of vacuum energy will also change. Somehow, human beings happen uh, to live at the perfect uh, point of balance, and we must live there. We sprang up, life sprang up, at a place that has to exist. Why? Because as vacuum energy is tipping the scales one way or the other, all possible values come about. One might imagine a family's home movies of the kids growing up, most of the movies got lost accidentally, but there's footage of one baby being born and then the same child at age 12. Even with missing footage, it must be true that every stage of growth between one day and 12 years existed. So this is a, you know, a little bit of an excerpt from Andre Linde's, uh, I guess, about how physics could explain um, life, and uh, that's the existence of what he calls vacuum energy. There are problems because, of course, uh, energy is a human construct, and so is uh, vacuum, but that's how we do science, through creating models, and uh, this is as good a model as any. Now, of course, if you take the consciousness approach and you look at what Rumi has said, he said, I I first existed as a mineral, but I was sleeping, and then I was a plant, and I was dreaming, and then I was an animal, and I woke up, and 
then as a human uh, became self-aware. Now that's another uh, view, isn't it? It's called panpsychism. And panpsychism holds that uh, everything is alive. The whole universe is alive from atom to cosmos. As I mentioned before, I once communicated with, uh, with uh, Freeman Dyson and he mentioned three riddles. He said the first riddle is a universe that is fine-tuned for mind and cosmos. The second is the random movement of atoms. And uh, the third is our own consciousness. And he, he also went on to elaborate that these three riddles might be connected to each other. Okay, so uh, that's uh, what is uh, frequently referred to as the entropic principle, that the universe is fine-tuned for life and mind. Nevertheless, if we stick with the scientific model, we are left with either life is accidental and we don't know how it began, or um, the universe is panpsychist. Consciousness and life pervade the universe from atom to cosmos. So, Freeman Dyson also says elsewhere, every quantum experiment forces the atom to make a choice. And so, from that point of view, everything from atom onwards, to bacteria, to plants, to animals, to humans, uh, to cosmos, is alive and living. Okay. So those are current prevailing views. I want to go a little bit beyond that and say, if we understand what awareness is, then all these models, including panpsychism, are unnecessary. So understand awareness as the potential for experience and also as Rupert Spira has defined it, awareness or consciousness as that in which experience occurs, experience is known and out of which experience is made. So if you shift identity or to source your identity, my identity, then that source is awareness. And Awareness is all there is. Every thought is a movement of awareness. Every emotion is a movement of awareness. And every perception is a movement of awareness. Now, in this model, your body, mind, and the universe are all objects of experience. So your ground state is not body-mind, but that in which the body-mind and universe are simultaneously experienced. Your thoughts are objects, your emotions are objects, your perceptions are objects of perception. Who are you? Um, you are the ground state of both this body-mind as an individual, but also of the entire universe. And if life is awareness, then we are a species of awareness or a species of consciousness. And um, there is only one life. And that life is pure consciousness, uh, cosmic consciousness, uh, pure awareness, whatever you want to call it, in which everything shows up as an appearance in awareness. So this is a constantly changing appearance in awareness. And uh, so is the world a constantly changing appearance in awareness. The world that has evolved since the Big Bang is a constantly evolving appearance in awareness. And that appearance uh, is also species-specific, right? My experience as a human being is species-specific, also culture-specific. But before all these appearances started to manifest as mind-body universe, Awareness always existed in its pure potentiality. Awareness or consciousness is the immeasurable potential of all that was, all that uh, is, and all that will be. And this consciousness differentiates itself into observer process of observation and, and objects of observation. So, before the differentiation, what exists is 
pure consciousness. And so as pure consciousness, life has always existed. As pure consciousness, life has always existed. So this is the monistic idealist version. Okay, the monistic idealist version is that um, um, life did not begin. Life um, uh, has no beginning and life has no death. So um, in this view then, um, the question itself becomes irrelevant. Okay, it becomes irrelevant because um, life is eternal. Life is timeless. And as timeless being, you have always existed. That's why it's always good to remind yourself that your true self was never born and therefore is not subject to death. So that's how I would answer this question. Okay? That as pure potential, you take innumerable forms and as innumerable phenomena, but you yourself are beyond subject. Um, you, you yourself are not subject to birth or death. Okay, so I'm going to read you, I'm hoping to read you um, something from uh, my favorite poet, uh, Tagore, that may connect us to this subject, okay? So let me start with his very first poem from uh, Gitanjali, and uh, it addresses this very question. He says, you have made me endless, such is your pleasure. This frail vessel you empty again and again and fill it ever with fresh life. He's, of course, speaking to the divine being. This thin flute of a reed you have carried over hills and dales and have breathed through it melodies eternally new. At the immortal touch of your hands, my little heart loses its limits in joy and gives birth to utterance ineffable. Your infinite gifts come to me only on these very small hands of mine. Ages pass, and still you pour, and still there is room to fill. Okay, so remember that. Ages pass, and they fade and bloom as flowers. Epochs come and go. But we always are. Thank you. Come to discoveringyourself.com and join our conversation. See you tomorrow.